Okay, good afternoon. Conversation two, students. Today, today as I <clears throat> explained, we're going to do the second chapter in the book, which is about fashion, because uh, we missed uh, Monday because of Chuseok, and there are three Monday holidays, so we're gonna do this twice, maybe even three times this semester, <clears throat> um, just do an online lecture to fill in the gap so we don't end up having um, three classes in one week at the end of the semester. Uh, the, the question that is asked at the top of the page, the title of chapter two is, are you fashionable? Um, no, I am not. If I'm going to ask you that question, I'm not going to ask you that question. The question is going to be just tell me your opinion about fashion, which is, I think, um, more, it's fairer for those of us like myself who um, don't don't have fashion sense. The textbook is going to talk about all kinds of different um, categories of clothing. I wrote a few of them up on the board here already. <clears throat> uh, at the top, there are some really formal terms, which you probably don't come across very often. Vestments or attire. Um, you, you might hear attire more often, formal attire. Vestments, uh, is, it's from French. Um, a lot of formal language in English it comes from, the vocabulary comes from French. I've explained this to you already. So this is one of those cases. Uh, vestments sort of mean almost like ceremonial clothing. So in the church, for example, when in the Catholic church, uh, a bishop or a priest is, is wearing their, their um, very expensive ceremonial clothing, we call those, you know, um, priestly vestments or holy vestments or something like that. So you don't come across that word very often. We normally ref refer to anything that we put on our, our body as clothing or clothes, um, just pronunciation wise, uh, often I get uh, students trying to pronounce the th and, and uh, the, the syllable, an extra syllable. It's actually, clothes is just one syllable. It, it actually sounds more like, like close, like to close a door. We don't emphasize the th at all. In fact, we try to ignore it because it's very difficult to say. So don't, don't try and say like clothes. Uh, sometimes that's how it comes out when somebody is trying to pronounce it with the th and the, another syllable. But there's, there's only one syllable. So it, as soon as you say clothes, you're, whoever's listening, if their, their language is, if they're uh, familiar with English, they're going to be confused. Um, as I said, one of the biggest things about pronunciation, the, the biggest problems if you're talking to somebody is the, the length of the word, which uh, a syllable, changing a word from one syllable to two is uh, difficult for people to understand. If somebody has lived in Korea for 15 years, like myself, it, they might um, be able to hear your what you're trying to communicate better. But uh, as soon as you go abroad somewhere else, whether the person is in an English-speaking country or uh, using English as a second language, just like you, you're going to end up <clears throat> with a problem. Okay, so a typical one is talk or or walk, right? Uh, that is a single syllable. As soon as you start pronouncing two, like in Korean, you would have to do something like talk, k, right? Uh, as soon as you add that extra syllable, the person will. It's almost like uh, your. It's not almost like your brain can't uh, distinguish uh, the, the word. Can't um, doesn't know how to recognize the word if you make it into a two-syllable word rather than one. Okay, so yeah, this is a problem. For it depends on what country you're from, but um, you do have to aspirate that sound talk, which you have to cut it off before you end up with talk. Um, two syllables. So clothes is the same way. Um, just soften the th, maybe turn it into something more like a z or an s. 
so clothes, okay? Clothing, of course, is two syllables, so if that's more comfortable. My second language is French, and I uh, there's two things I struggled with um, when I spoke French. Uh, one is grammar, because French grammar is hard. Uh, and the second thing is pronunciation. And uh, sometimes just it's not worth it to deal with it, so just use a different word that's more comfortable to say, if you can. That's one strategy to deal with uh, words that are hard for you to say. <clears throat> okay, so there's all kinds of different clothing. Generally, you can just divide um, clothing into two types. You know, you got your formal, your informal. You may have noticed that uh, my, uh, style, my clothing style is fairly casual, uh, more informal. Some professors in our department wear uh, a suit all the time. And uh, also, I had a professor who I never saw him wearing anything else uh, than a suit. So that obviously falls into the formal category. And the expectation is, I mean, formal wear, formal clothing, we do use the word wear uh, as a noun, as well as the verb to like put something on. Formal clothing, formal wear, uh, represents something. People, people consider, you know, um, it more respectful, better manners. There's a reason that we have formal clothing. And um, personally, I, I, consi I consider most formal clothing uh, less comfortable, though. I think most people agree with that. Formal clothing is not supposed to be it's not designed to be comfortable, it's designed to be respectful and to show a uh, certain, represent a certain level of high class, you know, society or, or formality, right? That's why, that's where the word formal comes from. So in some cases you, you have no choice, you have to wear something like that. And if you don't wear the, the proper clothing, then you're out of place. You're, you run the risk of people judging you um, or not even allowing you to participate in the event, okay? So that's where formal and informal comes from. Formal is a sort of an expectation or a requirement of a level of clothing, a style of clothing, which has some rules. Recently, the Queen, uh, Queen of Great Britain, Queen Elizabeth II, she passed away, and in in the in her case, I'm not talking about, let's not talk about whether, what your personal feelings are about uh, the monarchy uh, or her. Just the, the fact of the, of the matter is that there's so many rules and certain types of clothing that you have to wear. You, if you watched on TV or you saw on the internet, you saw pictures or videos, you probably noticed that uh, there was uniforms. Um, there were thousands of people attending uh, if you were one of those individuals who was invited to participate in the funeral, then you had to wear ex exactly what you were told to wear. Or uh, if you're a visiting dignitary like President Joe Biden or Prime Minister Justin Trudeau or uh, President, um, his, I'm forgetting his name, <clears throat> uh, the Korean president, <laughs> If you were one of those individuals, then you had to wear the, the appropriate attire. There, there was um, a visit, a state visit. Um, Donald Trump attended uh, an, an event uh, in England where he met the Queen and he wore, he decided to wear his um, khaki pants and golf shirt rather than a suit, which it was strange because he normally does wear his trademark, you know, uh, clothing is the blue, dark blue suit and a red tie, right? But uh, he decided to wear um, more like golf clothing, which was sort of surprising, but since he was the president, it, it was allowed, but a uh, strange sort of choice. Um, I also sometimes look like I'm dressed up more like a student than a professor. So the line, the line there is uh, sometimes a little bit blurry. <clears throat> Casual, 
clearly is, is uh, the op it's a connected to informal and people wear casual stuff but um, where the line is drawn uh, we get this these other terms semi-casual or business casual uh, which means that you essentially in business that means that you don't have to wear a suit but you wear something nice um, you know golf clothing is not uh, informal clothing I mean they had, golf has a lot of protocol and, and a lot of ex expectations um, and the golf has its own fashion style as well so you know these dress codes are created by people that, that want certain requirements. If you go to a really fancy restaurant, you might have to wear a certain, you know, type of clothing. If you walk into, you know, if you go to a dance or a ball, uh, you, the ladies are expected to wear a dress and the men are expected to wear suits. Of course, the super formal suit, we call it tuxedo. And um, yeah, well, it, there are, there are suits that are cut differently and they emphasize certain things. A tuxedo is very fancy, sort of elaborate type of suit. Um, normally you don't end up wearing that unless you're going to a wedding or something. Uh, but you know, that, that style and that word is very famous. And obviously that's not an English word. Tuxedo comes from Italian, um, Southern, Southern uh, European culture originally. Uh, but it's a certain cut of suit that's really um, has has a little bit more flair to it, more buttons and more shape to it, and uh, that's why it's called tuxedo. Normally, you wear a bow tie. Uh, rather, if you walk around wearing a bow tie every day, it kind of looks ridiculous. Um, so you you have to adjust what you're wearing for different occasions. In the textbook, they've got all different uh, types of people. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, hopefully that's not Corona, just a regular sneeze. Um, you can see uh, the, the people dressed up, especially on page 15, the, the, the man with the blue um, shirt and the, the pants and the belt and the tie. That's a really good example of business casual, right? He doesn't have a suit jacket, but he's, he's dressed up nicely. It's a little bit more comfortable than wearing a jacket, but he's got dress shoes on and a belt and pants and he's got a tie. Um, that's that's really that's a really good example of um, what we call business casual. Okay. Um, beside him, there's a person wearing jeans, and they've got looks like something like basketball shoes, high cut sneakers, which we usually use for basketball, and sort of uh, baggy clothing. And then there's uh, a lady. She's got, she's got a jacket on, a checkered jacket, and some jeans that are, that are tight jeans and some, some boots that have stiletto heels. That looks, I mean, is, that's really a, a line. Where, is that a formal outfit or informal outfit? It, it looks, it's fashionable, I would say. And you're gonna judge it to be formal or informal, somewhere in the middle. Um, certainly it would be acceptable in most cases, but if there was some kind of dress code, maybe she would have to change her outfit. Um, then there's uh, a woman, she's, maybe she's doing some sort of aerobics. Um, she's got very comfortable clothing, bright colors, and she's got a, you know, a train, some sort of training ball beside her. Um, there's a woman, there's three women in a row there. The middle one, um, she looks like she's working. She's wearing, again, business business attire or semi business, semi casual, but that's a suit. It's a, she's got a skirt on, uh, but that's a suit. So, I, I mean, that falls into the category of formal, you would think. Um, and the third, third lady, uh, yeah, she's, she's dressed nicely but that's casual clothing, right? Um, something you might say it's, we might call it street clothes because it's comfortable, but you can like walk out and do your shopping or, or go to a restaurant or whatever and fit in, right? Street clothes. 
Um, similar, the, the guy at the top with the red shirt who's kind of like waving, he's also wearing something that you could go, you could be relaxing inside or you could go outside. So you can call, you can call that street clothes. All right. There's a whole bunch of vocabulary and there's a, a lot of different, you know, exercises there. The, the grammar exercise, every chapter has some sort of grammar point to emphasize. Um, this one is about verb patterns. And I, I think this is a good way to practice grammar because most of us don't really enjoy practicing grammar. Uh, so the, the way that I usually approach it in class is just by example. Patterns uh, and practice will give you the ability to to have good grammar without memorizing lists of and na names of things. Uh, if you if you do like that kind of stuff, we do have a linguistics department, and we have professors who are experts in grammar. Even though English is not their uh, first language, they probably their grammar is as good as mine, or they can break it down uh, and explain it at least as well as me because my grammar is more intuitive. Uh, I just do it because I, I know the patterns uh, and I just use them. And I'm, I'm suggesting that perhaps maybe that's a better way for you to do it too. Uh, it depends on your, your opinion though, depends on your personality. If you do want to figure out exactly um, how grammar is constructed, like it shows here, verb plus verb ing plus adjective slash noun. I, I'm not really that interested in those terms as much as I'm interested in whether you can construct the sentence um, without uh, needing to break it down. I like wearing bright t-shirts or I like to wear bright t-shirts. They're, they're essentially here you're talking about two different constructions, grammatical constructions, and you can modify them with different verbs, right? Like, love, prefer, hate are the examples they give. Uh, and then on page 17, they have a bunch of scrambled sentences, which you have to rearrange. For example, uh, number two down there is uh, put on a suit my father every day hates. So you have to rearrange uh, the words so that the syntax and the grammar is correct. And the answer would be my father hates to put on a suit every day, which I can identify with. So I also do not like to put on a suit every day. Um, <clears throat> normally we, we can escape that these days. Like I said, there isn't really a dress code for professors, which is fortunate for me because uh, I prefer not to be, be dressed up formally every time I go to class. <clears throat> All right, um, page 18, page 18, is, is about uh, trend. There's a lot of, I mean, that's a big part of, that's a big part of fashion. Uh, we've been talking about individual things or categories so far. I talked about my personal fashion sense, which is very poor. Um, but when, when I ask you to, talk, to discuss fashion, uh, and when you do your homework, you are welcome to talk about fashion in whatever way you choose, okay? So one thing is to talk about yourself, your own personal fashion sense and, and what you choose to wear or, or not to wear. And um, of course you have to uh, buy clothing. You can go shopping and uh, choose which clothes you want to wear or you maybe somebody else chooses the clothes for you. In, in my case, um, a lot of my shop, a lot of my clothing shopping, uh, my wife or in, in the past, my mother made the choices for me uh, because I wasn't very interested in it. But anyway, you, you do have things that you like, things that you, uh, everybody has, everybody has uh, some sort of interest in what kind of clothing they would like to wear. Um, my personal favorite uh, is sports clothing, mostly because sports clothing is functional and I enjoy playing sports. So 
um, putting on a uniform or putting on clothing that is designed for a particular sport, uh, whether it's soccer or basketball or badminton, it doesn't really matter, or, or jogging or going to the gym. Um, those I have a lot of clothing, which I would say probably half of my clothing is related to sports. Uh, even though I'm old and I don't play sports very much, I have a lot of clothing dedicated to specific sports and equipment as well. Uh, I play ice hockey, being a Canadian. Uh, these days I don't have much time to play, but I do, uh, when I have time, play ice hockey at Nam San Gongwan in Daejeon. And uh, I have a whole, that, that's a, a lot of clothing. You can't wear regular clothing when you play ice hockey. You have to have specialized clothing. Um, That's why um, this this word wear right gets used. It gets used a lot, uh, and Koreans use it often as well. You'll hear people say training wear, right? Sports wear, training wear, that kind of thing, uh, because those those uh, that clothing is made for a certain purpose. That's different than a trend. A trend usually uh, is because a group of people usually. Uh, a certain age group or a certain region. Now we have, now of course we have global, we have global trends. But in the past, usually um, people pick up on trends. Often these people, uh, often these trends originate uh, from, you know, famous people wearing certain things and everybody else starts to follow them. Um, again, if we go back to people uh, that are famous celebrities or people in upper class society, um, the, the tendency for people to follow in their, their, literally follow in their shoes, to buy things that look like what they wear, uh, it goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, you know? So um, clothing, clothing uh, amongst rich people, of course they have a lot more money and they have, uh, they can, make choices that the rest of us can't. They can, they can experiment and they can buy things. That's one of the reasons that if you um, get older or you make a lot of money, you end up having too many, having so many clothes. If you watch any of those shows where the celebrities, the singers, entertainers, actors, successful businessmen, whatever, businesswomen, or the royal family, you know, they have, um, 300 pairs of shoes or, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dresses or, or hats or something like that. Completely unnecessary. But usually we, we see the, um, the example of this clothing and then it catches on and uh, there's a lot of money to be made. Of course, this is a huge business. Fashion is a billion, multiple, multiple, I mean, Billions and billions of dollars are are consumed uh, in order to make clothing, to transport clothing, to deliver it, to, for people to wear it. Um, this is something that you also can talk about. These these um, is it what what's the effect of all of this um, consumption? We might say overconsumption or materialism. Right, it, um, sorry, this, this arrow is going somewhere else. If you're materialistic, it means you're focused on, you know, things. It's, and the downside of that, of course, um, everybody likes to have stuff uh, and people like to look good. That's not a problem. But if you, you know, if you consume, we have this uh, consumerism sort of idea that uh, is connected to money, is connected to uh, e economic interests. Uh, but the downside of it is if we make all this clothing and we, we, we have to produce it all, uh, it consumes a huge amount of energy and um, water. Water is a big concern. Whenever you make any sort of piece of clothing, there's a certain amount of water and energy and effort that is required. And this has an, a negative impact on the, the planet. This is 
a bad thing for our environment, right? So the more clothes you have, the more damage you are doing to the environment because uh, you consuming all these things and bringing them to your house and having them in your possession, that, that uh, there's a huge impact, right? There's a huge impact on how much pollution, how much water is consumed, how much energy is consumed. Um, so we, we have, you know, 7 billion, 8 billion people. And you think that if each of us um, every year buys a hundred articles of clothing, let just do the math. Just do the math that if that each one has an effect on uh, the planet, on damaging the, our environment, and you've got 700 or 800 billion articles of clothing. If that's what happens, the idea, you know, of course, people are poor and they, they, there's, it's not an equal society, but what we're just talking about, even if we just talk about, let's say half the world, 3 billion people are, you know, consuming a certain number of clothes every just, it's, it's a massive, massive. So uh, it's a massive amount. So um, you can talk about that. If you'd rather talk about the impact of the fashion industry, Then you can talk about that. If you want to talk about trends, like, you know, in the 1940s, this is how people dressed, you can talk about that. If you want to talk about fashion industry, you can talk about the environmental impact or, or the economic impact. If you want to talk about the business side of it in a positive way, or you want to talk about it in a negative way because of the environmental impact, that's your choice. Uh, or you can talk about, you know, your personal uh, interest in fashion, like your own um, style. Those any anything is okay as long as you um, as long as you make sure that your answer is connected to fashion, right? Okay. I I just remembered the Korean Yoon Seo Gyal, right? I don't know why I forgot his name. Anyway, Moon Jae In was easier to remember for some reason. <clears throat> okay, uh, jeans. Everybody loves jeans, and uh, the story of how jeans became fashionable. Uh, it's an interesting one, I think. Um, denim is is the material that jeans are made from, and uh, jeans jean material is supposed to be tough, supposed to be strong. Um, in the past, it was actually sort of a working class material. It was used because people wore it because it was uh, durable and uh, it was an appropriate material for a job. Just like I said uh, about sportswear, right? De denim was a material that was useful and it could be, um, it, it had a practical purpose for it. Not, it wasn't for its appearance, it was for its, its uh, practical characteristics. So it's, it's uh, interesting that this style started out for basically for blue collar workers, people who are in mining or um, some sort of like physical industry, farming, that kind of stuff. I was a, I had a part-time job, uh, a summer job rather, when I was in high school uh, working on a farm and I, I wore jeans most of the time because it, the material is tough and uh, there's a lot of, you know, plants and, and material that will scratch your skin and your legs, and the, the basically the jeans protect you. I, I wore jeans when I, I had a factory job too, uh, during university, and jeans were the best option, really, um, for work pants. Uh, so it's interesting that over time, jeans became uh, very fashionable, and people who were wealthy were wearing them to show off, you know, um, their style rather than to use them, you know, in a, for, for their job. That's, that's an interesting development, but it's, it's one of those, again, it's a, it's a sort of a fashion industry. Um, it's part of the fashion industry to make people interested in the way that something looks, uh, and, and to sort of disconnect things from their practical purpose. Sometimes there's, there's a reason that people are wearing certain clothing. Um, if you're living in a very hot country, surprisingly, um, people think you know white clothing usually is better 
Uh, but a lot of the time people are wearing very dark clothing. If you go to uh, North Africa or the Middle East, you see a lot of people wearing dark clothing. The reason for that is because um, of how much light and energy is absorbed by a material. And um, light, thin, dark clothing uh, is preferred to white um, or light clothing. But you know, uh, in, in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, we tend to, in the, in the summer, wear bright clothing, especially white, um, but colorful bright clothing is preferred. We, we don't have a climate where we have to deal with heat, you know, all, all year round. So I think the people in those countries know better. Uh, it's not just because of, you know, hiding your appearance or um, some sort of, you know, connection with the color and your culture, it's also practical. So we got jeans here. Um, jeans are one of the longest trends. Uh, you might not even, I don't know even if you can call it a trend because it's just been around, it's like a permanent thing. And that's not really a trend, is it? Um, anyway, it, the, the first sentence in the textbook on page 18 is, jeans are one of fashion's longest survivors, right? So they don't even call it a trend. They just say it's there, it's always there. People started wearing jeans over a hundred years ago and Levi Strauss was the company that introduced jeans as tough clothes for people uh, in San Francisco who were gold miners. That's the story. Um, that, the, that there's a, excuse me, stumbling a little bit. Um, the 49ers, my favorite football team, the San Francisco 49ers, they're named after the people in the gold rush in 1849. It's easy to remember. Um, who, and that's, that's a lot. We're getting closer to 200 years, right? 1849 is more like 170 years ago. So of course, um, that's the introduction. That's not when the jeans exploded as a, as a, you know, fashion staple. So, but by the time our grandparents were around, um, Koreans probably weren't wearing jeans until the 1960s, 1950s, 1960s, after World War II was over. But um, yeah, the, the jeans became adopted as like a sort of a fashion staple, something that everybody wore um, by, by about 100 years ago, before World War II, they started wearing, you can see there's people dancing in their jeans and there's a pile of jeans there. And there's a, of course, there's an old man who's supposed to be a gold digger. Uh, the, the dark blue color of denim was very practical because it's easy to wash. Um, cowboys loved jeans in the 19th century. Uh, it's perfect for horseback riding and working outdoors, but eventually actors like James Dean started to make popular jeans popular because um, he, was, he was a famous handsome actor in the 1950s. And when he started wearing them, people thought, changed their mind. It's not. Um, I mean, cowboys, of course, uh, became Hollywood made cowboys uh, famous because of all the Western movies that were, were produced in the middle of the 20th century. Uh, so there was the imitation of cowboy fashion, and then there's actors that started wearing them too, James Dean being one of them. Um, but not everybody accepted this because of the formal, informal thing. Some. It's, it's hard to imagine that this would uh, be something that would happen in America, but um, some schools in the U United States banned students from wearing denim. There's, there's kind of like a, well, we, I talk about this more in, in, in my British and American culture class, so I won't get into it too much, but you know, America is a very diverse place and there's what we call culture wars that happen periodically. Uh, some of this is due to changing opinions and some of it is po political and some of it is um, related to religion. But uh, America is, a, is an interesting country because it's got so many, it's got so many different states and uh, the diversity of opinion uh, and styles are, are remarkable. Any big country, China and India, of course, also have this, this diversity, but in, in America, it's a public debate usually. So yeah, you're not, <laughs> you're wearing jeans uh, and you can't, they don't let you into the school. 
Uh, it's just like in Korea where you have to wear, your hair has to be cut when you go to middle school and you have to wear a uniform. We don't usually think that America has those kind of rules, but then in the past they did. And uh, so no, no jeans was a policy for some schools. Um, in the 1960s, hippies started to, you know, change the shape of the jeans. We had bell bottoms and they drew flowers on them and stuff. So now jeans have become this kind of versatile um, fashion, you know, option. Uh, lots of people have different um, styles of jeans and, and uh, they started out being cheap, tough clothing for workers. And now you can get designer jeans that are really expensive. Uh, and you know, you can pay hundreds of dollars for one pair of jeans. Um, so the, the, it's completely transformed. So um, that's the topic for this week. Uh, I think I've discussed it enough. There's another good uh, little, there's a, another short article on page 20 about Scottish uh, clothing. The, the title is, Is That a Skirt? Um, one of my favorite styles is the, the kilt, the Scottish kilt, which is not a skirt. Um, it's a man's, it's a, it's men's attire. I, I mean, you can call it a man's skirt, I guess, if you want. But anyway, you can, you can read those articles over, make your own choice um, about what part of fashion you would like to discuss. And, and that, that's the homework assignment is to, you know, choose something about fashion that you think is interesting and half a page like usual. Please write it and then submit it on the cyber campus. And that's, that's it. That's it for today's lecture and I'll see you, um, I mean, I'm going to post this and I'll see you on Monday um, and explain any other details that are necessary. So have a good day, thank you for listening and I'll, I'll see you in class.